It's the Real News Network. I'm Greg Wilpert coming to you from Quito, Ecuador. The tiny Eastern European country of Latvia, which has only about 2 million inhabitants, is in the news again, this time because of its central bank governor, Ilmas Remesevic. At the Real News, we covered Latvia's economic situation about two months ago because a few years ago, Latvia was a poster child for austerity and neoliberalism that supposedly worked. Now, however, the economy is doing poorly and its banks are alleged to be engaged in massive corruption and money laundering. The central bank governor, Remesevich himself, faces corruption charges but has not yet been formally charged. Joining me to shed light on the latest developments for this poster child of neoliberalism is Bill Black. Bill is a, form, is a white collar criminologist, former financial regulator, and associate professor of economics and law at the University of Missouri, Kansas City. He is also the author of the book, The Best Way to Rob a Bank is to Own One. Thanks for joining us again, Bill. Thank you. So for those who haven't seen our earlier segment on Latvia, give us a brief summary as to what happened in Latvia since the global financial crisis. Okay, so slightly farther back, um, of course, uh, the three Baltic nations, uh, Estonia, uh, Latvia, Lithuania, uh, from north to south in that order, just south of Helsinki, uh, Finland, uh, became independent states when the Soviet Union busted apart. And their great idea brought to you by all those neoliberal consultants and economists was they should do what Finland did and be a bridge between uh, Russia and the West. And so that's what they did. And uh, this produced massive corruption as the Russian system of uh, kleptocrats uh, emerged. Meanwhile, came the financial crisis of 2008. And in that financial crisis uh, crushed many, many nations, including um, the economies of the three Baltic states. Now, the right answer to that in economics is to have stimulus programs, but uh, even then, indeed, the head of the central bank that you referred to uh, in Latvia is the longest serving head of a central bank in all of Europe. And his thing, um, and it was a religion uh, with him, still is, is austerity, 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 right? Just crush the workers, uh, reduce their wages and such, and then we'll be competitive. And, and of course, what happened is uh, the best and brightest young folks, as soon as they graduated, left. And so one of the reasons they have such a tiny population is the population has actually been shrinking as they export Latvians, especially their uh, best educated folks. But meanwhile, uh, on top of the austerity, they had this system that had been growing uh, in league with the kleptocrats uh, in Russia and with the rise of Putin. These are, uh, you know, all uh, his cronies and such. And whenever you have that come into a banking system, you get absolute corruption. And of course, it, the corruption can't just be in the banks. They have to get away with it. So what you get is corruption in the form of bribing government uh, officials. Uh, quite literally, and then, of course, in all the other subtle ways that you reward folks. So uh, the, then, the, as you said, for a very brief period, the austerity was pronounced to be a brilliant success. Uh, Latvia was held up uh, as uh, the best, the poster child for the success of austerity. And then it turned out not only was it uh, a welter of corruption that was then feeding back just, you know, really screwing up their democracy, screwing up uh, their economy. But on top of that, the particular form of corruption heavily involved uh, money laundering uh, from Russia and a significant part of it uh, involving North Korea. Indeed, this is how North Korea financed it, the major developments it's made in its ballistic missiles and the miniaturization of the warheads that have put the United States uh, at risk of uh, attack relatively soon. So you mentioned that <clears throat> Remesevich, the central bank governor, has been a, a, a huge advocate of austerity and neoliberalism in his country and his longest serving uh, central bank governor in Europe. Um, 
So, uh, but uh, but he's accused now of massive corruption. What exactly is he being accused of, and uh, and how how is this connected to the 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 policies that he was pursuing? So first, we don't know exactly what uh, he's being charged with because he hasn't been formally charged. But uh, all of the media reports and his own responses say that he's being charged uh, with taking bribes. Uh, and there is a um, Russian kleptocrat uh, who says that he has he, he and his bank were one of the folks that bribed. But on top of that, you know, you would think austerity, conservative, that this would be very pro law and order and, you know, rule of law and all that stuff. No, um, he, uh, the head of the central bank has uh, turned a blind eye to the massive money laundering and corruption of Latvian banks. And of course, he's not supposed to just be running the money supply, which no longer really exists because they've joined the euro. Uh, he, the principal thing he's supposed to be doing uh, is regulating banks. And he um, simply wasn't there in terms of trying to prevent this corruption. And now, allegedly, we know why, uh, because he was such a major recipient, uh, according to the charges. The informal so last charges. time we talked, sorry, last time we talked uh, about the situation, uh, we were focusing a lot on uh, the involvement of uh, North Korea in Latvia. But more recent reports have focused on on the Russian involvement. That is, uh, for example, the ABLV Bank, which is at the center of these uh, money laundering allegations, uh, belongs only six percent of their deposits belongs to Latvians, whereas the vast majority, forty three percent, belongs to Russians. Uh, why is it? What what are they doing exactly? So first, it's the same story. The Russian story is the North Korean story. It's just that the North Korean part is a subset. So the broader story, again, is this. The smart guy economists and consultants came in and said, hey, you've got this uh, big economy, Russia, right next to you. You have all these people that speak Russian. You have you know, tons of ethnic Russians uh, with connections this is what you should do. You should uh, be um, financial uh, intermediaries. Indeed, their phrase was uh, that uh, Latvia would be the Baltic version of Switzerland, right, in terms of banking. So that was the plan from the beginning. And of course, if you invite a bunch of people who are amazing white collar frauds and thugs into your country, <laughs> very bad things are going to happen. So there, most of the banks and then the largest banks uh, in Latvia don't actually serve the Latvian people. Uh, as you said, the largest uh, had 6% of its deposits were actually Latvians. Um, overwhelmingly, the, the, these banks are set up not for Latvians, but for foreigners. And that means to launder money. Right. This is the way of getting it out of Russia because everyone's afraid that Putin will grab uh, even more of the money and hold you hostage to get it. So you want to get the money out of Russia. You steal it there. You steal it in other countries and then you move it to other places. Whoever will pay best and among the people that would pay best were the North Koreans uh, who needed hard money currency. And by through this money laundering, they were able to get hard money currencies to be able to buy key components and and even um, the scientists uh, and such that uh, help them nuclearize. So you have broad based corruption. It's not really Latvian. It is the, it, exactly really the title of my book. The best way to rob a bank is to own one. That is precisely the recipe that they're following. And this means that the Latvia uh, is the, the middleman, the complicit money launderer for many of the worst frauds uh, in the former Soviet Union. So, for example, people probably never heard of it, but Moldova, uh, another one of those states that used to be part of the Soviet Union, had a billion dollar fraud. Now, for Moldova, <laughs> that was basically a destroy. That was the big, the, essentially the entire budget for the year. Uh, type of thing. They stole a billion bucks, right, using a major bank and uh, ties to the head of state. That kind of corruption 
Um, indeed, we have the Magnitsky Act, uh, which people possibly have followed some because it's a big part of why what Putin wanted to get relief from and was hoping that Trump uh, would uh, basically repeal or refuse to enforce the Magnitsky Act. Well, Magnitsky uh, was actually killed, we think murdered, uh, in prison when he started to blow the whistles. And that fraud also, uh, the money laundering wasn't simply in Russia, it was largely in Latvia as well. So Latvia is the obscure answer to uh, the uh, many questions of why did this fraud occur and where did it occur and how did the money leave? Uh, the answer is Latvia. One final, <clears throat> hopefully quick question. Uh, th there's a curious situation here in the Latvian case where although there are serious allegations ag against uh, Rimesevic, uh, nothing has been done to remove him so far. I mean, they're still working on the charges, but uh, they c he cannot be removed because the stated reason is central bank autonomy. Uh, and this is he's even been protected by the European Central Bank, apparently. W what does this say to you about the vaunted principle of central bank autonomy? Well, that it uh, serves to protect whatever the bankers are doing. And if the bankers are running uh, one of the world's largest money laundering operations, that's what you got get. Um, so yes, the parliament again of uh, Latvia has voted 55 to nothing to ask him to resign. His own staff at the central bank has asked him to resign. The United States uh, under Trump is hammering him as running and allowing a massive uh, corrupt operation and is certainly taking the position that he is corrupt. So it is obscene. In fact, it is the reductio ad absurdum of bank independence. The European Central Bank would actually seek to intervene. It's, it's asked the court of justice to rule uh, and prevent this guy's removal on the grounds that, well, he might be corrupt, but he needs to be independently corrupt. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Okay, I was speaking to Bill Black, Associate Professor of Economics and Law at the University of Missouri, Kansas City. Thanks again, Bill, for having joined us today. Thank you. And thank you for joining the Real News Network.